we are done with uh, creation of models we have looked at uh, different kinds of models right we have uh, evaluated uh, models relating to classification we have looked at the models relating to numerical predictions we looked at uh, the models uh, uh, which are uh, unsupervised using the cluster analysis class uh, rules etc now our objective is what are the ways that are available to evaluate the performance of the model how do i really assess whether this particular model is good enough or i require some kind of improvisation to the model now this is where first let's look at what do we mean by the performance of the model what uh, what uh, what kind of models and what kind of performances we are typically looking at and after that we will focus more and more towards regard uh, the classification models so we have built different kinds of classification models we know decision trees we know uh, 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 naves bias we also looked at classification rules or probably neural networks support vector machines there are so many such kind of algorithms that we have used for performing the classification of the data now out of all these methods that we have used how do i really measure which one has done really great of course one method that we have used uh, all across is use the test data testing it out on the test data and look out for the accuracy on the test data so whichever one was creating a much higher accuracy on the testing data we have gone ahead and used that uh, as a better model for our data set but something more we want to look at right we want to extend it to really do a thorough evaluation of the performance of the model so using the confusion matrix right where we talked about the confusion matrices are nothing but we it's a table where we have the predicted values on one side let's say a b c groups are predicted and the actuals are there on the other side actual a b c so we are trying to talk about how many of them are falling here how many of them are actually b but have been predicted as a and so on so this kind of matrix is what we were calling as confusion matrix we created the confusion matrices either using the table command or probably the cross table command as well so we can go ahead doing the same things we need to look at the various measures of performances that Uh, can be a uh, use for classification models and how do i really visualize the graphical ways of representing all these things and finally uh, uh, what kind of models i can use for estimating the future performance where i don't have information regarding the data for which uh, i'm going to make the prediction so here we would be are uh, taking it with respect to the test data but yes uh, so if i have to really uh, look at uh, from the real world perspective what are the various uh, techniques that are available for me so we all know for each specific uh, purpose let's say for classification we have different algorithms we have discussed different kinds of algorithms each of them has their own advantages each of them has their own disadvantages so i need to have some kind of a testing mechanism which is like an exam right i need to have an exam out of all these uh, various classification algorithms that i'm using who did the best so there should be some kind of a test which clearly bring out who has done which algorithm has done really better compared to the others when the same task same data has been given for learning purpose 
So, and uh, to what extent each of these learning algorithms have really abstracted the learning process and how many of them are to what extent they have generalized it so that given a new data, they can really perform the best. So, we really need some kind of testing mechanisms to address that particular aspect. Now, we have been using this predictive accuracy, right? We have taken 30% of the total data as the test data and we have been uh, uh, testing this model on the test data, seeing what percentage or what proportion of the total test data is accurately predicted. So, the higher is the proportion of the ac uh, test data accurately predicted, we were relying more and more on that particular model. It's a good way, but of course, may not be sufficient measure of performance. So, I really want to look at what other kind of performance measures are available. So, we see as we move along that there are different kinds of performance methods different kinds of mechanisms. So, to ensure that the various performances reasonably reflect the model's ability. So, which are really assessing whether the model has done a good job in terms of being able to predict on the test data or unseen data. Right? It's not overfitted. If I test the same on the training data, there is a possibility of overfitment. But uh, if I am using uh, it on a test data, then probably this uh, problem of overfitting does not come into picture at all. Now, this is where we would like to look at the various methods that are available for classification data. How do I really measure the performance of the various algorithms that I have used for the classification purposes. The first part which we are all comfortable with, look at the classification accuracy. Where I am looking at running it on the test data, I have divided the proportion of the current predictions by the total number of predictions. So, if the current, if I am talking about a 300 test data, uh, 270 of them are correctly predicted, 30 of them are wrongly predicted, then the classification accuracy is 270 divided by 300, making it 90%. But what we also need to understand here is, th though this classification accuracy is a good measure of performance, but in some cases the 90% may look much, much uh, 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 weaker, whereas in some, in some cases, the 90% itself, like there is something really, uh, this, this model is something really phenomenal. So, there is no way I can just uh, look at this 90% and say whether the model has done a good job or not. Because the most important uh, reason why I am doing this classification is I have a purpose in mind. So, I really want to look at whether my purpose is fully met or not. So, I need to have a measure uh, in terms of rather than the accuracy in terms of the prediction, I really want to see whether this performance measure, whether this model that I have built is, is uh, giving me that real intended purpose. Now, this is where we are looking at a slightly different measures, different mechanisms of evaluating classifiers. Okay, so from that perspective, we have, uh, we, we can still use the true actual class values. I am comparing the actuals with the predicted values on the testing data. So, the predicted class values always on the testing data we are using the predict and whatever is the model we are getting the test data. We are uh, computing the predicted values like this. We have the actual class values and based on that we can also look at the internal prediction probabilities to see whether there is uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, overlap. Uh, midway kind of stuff 
right? Because it might be possible that uh, the the probabilities are forty percent and sixty percent. So the classifier has put the 